Hey, welcome to Digital Turf. I'm Patrick Morrow, and as you know, or maybe you don't know, this is the show that takes you to the cutting edge of the video game world. We're in Las Vegas at Westwood Studios, and if you're a gamer, I'm sure you know about Command & Conquer and Red Alert. We're going to take a look at these games and also their new game called Blade Runner. I'm sure you saw the movie. We've got all the other regular features of the show. We've got game reviews. We're going to go online and show you what's hot on the internet. And we're going to show you one of the hottest football games for the PlayStation and exactly what went into making it. We do have to go to break right now, but I want to remind you to go online and check out our homepage on the internet. If you've got questions, dial us up on the toll-free number or send us an email. We, we will eat you back. I'm going to go inside and we'll be right back to Digital Turf. Right now, though, have you ever wondered how they make video games and how they make PC video games? Well, we're at Westwood Studios and we decided to try to find out. So uh, we went around, we talked to some people, and we want you to check it out. The exciting part of it to me is, is that I'm actually able to create and uh, visualize every element of that universe that, that's going to go into the game. So what we have to do is draw the character. They will create a wireframe mesh of the character and they'll actually hire somebody that looks like the sketch and they'll videotape his face or hers from the front and the side and the videotape they've taken they will map it right onto that. Well, I would take the, uh, the conceptuals which is a 2D image basically and bring that into the third dimension. This scene in particular is Howie Lee's sushi shop in Blade Runner. And most of my job is doing the modeling and also uh, import those motion capture files and to make the animation look good. Before any file we done, uh, we got the concept drawing and we need to build the actual 3D model. I'm in a motion capture suit and this is how they capture motion, hence the name, in video games. You see it in sports games, fighting games, all sorts of games. And we're going to give you an example of how this works. So, Guys, let's let's go ahead and do this. A few years back, games were distributed on floppy disks. They were very small. A lot of times, uh, a project was just done by one programmer, maybe one graphic artist and a producer. Now, multi-million dollar industry, big bucks, high production value, more entertainment, which means more space. Right now, in terms of magnetic storage, we've got about 1.3 or 1.4 terabytes. But we're going to do a little sword scene here, Joe Kukin and I. And we're going to do it. We're in the, the, the green room, the green screen at Westwood Studios. You can probably tell why. What are we going to do after we, we orchestrate this maneuver? Th then what happens? Well, Patrick, I'm going to kill you. And then we're going to take the uh, action that we just did, run it through the compositing system, our Flint system, and composite it into a uh, computer-generated 3D environment. Jeez. OK. <laughs> Guess not. And the reason why we can do all this stuff uh, with the video now is because we have great compositing systems like Discrete Logic's Flint. To get this green out of here, I'm going to go into Flint and just sample it. And then, of course, I'll just suck it out with my little eyedropper now. And then, of course, I can manipulate this guy in three dimensional space. We typically break the audio into three different components. We have a dialogue creation, sound effect, and the music. With a project like Blade Runner, we had about 6,000 lines of dialogue for all of the characters, and there's probably about 70 or 80 different characters in a game like Blade Runner. You want the player to feel like they're a part of the experience. Anything from listening to a song like this. which is a very medieval sounding theme and uh, would be heard, you know, wandering through a forest or whatever, and then you would hear something more dark and intense if you're wandering, say, through a cavernous uh, dungeon or a cave, something more along the lines that's creepy, like, sort of like this.
real moody elements there. Most of the same elements involved in directing films, movies, televisions, uh, shows go into directing video games as well. Um, although we have less time to create things such as story, character, personality, charisma of our, our, of our performers. That's what's great about this job. From game to game it changes, from genre to genre it changes. We've done now uh, strategy war games with a lot of um, uh, high action uh, uh, explosions, very um, exciting uh, archetypical characters of good guys and bad guys. We've got our adventure game series Karandia, a lot of humor and uh, uh, wackiness in that game, the fantasy role-playing game Lands of Lore 2, which is just coming out, and then of course Blade Runner, another adventure series. And we are currently in the office of the co-founder of Westwood Studios, Lou Castle. You doing okay, Lou? Doing just fine. Okay, thanks. first of all, I want to talk about some of the games, but I think it's interesting. This company started very small, and they came along. You guys evolved very nicely. Everybody who plays PC games knows Command & Conquer and Red Alert. And I don't want to say that you could necessarily envision all this, but talk a little bit about the evolution. No, actually, I, I had no idea that we would be where we are. I think uh, my partner, Brett, had a much better sense of what was going to become of Westwood eventually. Um, I just really, uh, really enjoyed the games, and I wanted to do digital artwork of some sort. We did start just the two of us in my garage and built the company up on its own profits uh, up until 1992 when we became part of Virgin. It's all working out well. And I mentioned Command and Conquer. I mentioned Red Alert. People know these games. Blade Runner is the game. Very highly anticipated. Why is it that nobody had gotten the bright idea to make a game out of this? Well, uh, it, took, it took a great deal of time for the Blade Runner partnership to get all of the rights together and to find... Uh, they, I think they've been waiting for the industry to mature a bit. Uh, it took them about three years of research to find the right company and the right partner. And it took us about two and a half years to build the game. So Jeez. if you add all these things in, uh, it takes a long time to get there. And how true is, is the game to the, to the actual movie itself? The sense of atmosphere and the, 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 uh, the whole timing, the emotion behind the film is completely captured in the product. You have an opportunity to wander around the world, meet the characters from the film, but you're not retelling the story of the film. You're actually having your own story occur concurrently with the film. So you actually watch the film happen almost in sort of a second person aspect while you're playing the game. And when I think back over the game, Harrison Ford, of course, Rutger Hauer, right. Daryl Hannah, and Sean Young, who happens to be in the game. Is yes. she play a similar character? Actually, yeah, she plays the same character. Rachel, again, since it's a concurrent storyline, uh, we are able to go back into the world of Los Angeles, November 2019, and visit all of the people that, uh, that Harrison Ford visits throughout the film. You're also there when they ultimately meet their demise or, or run off with uh, Harrison Ford, as Rachel does, um, Sean Young does. Uh, so it's really a, a, a nice blend. It's, a, it's an act of reliving the film, but at the same time having your own story, your own experience which is unique from the film, so a very immersive game. What else can we look for from Westwood? What else can you look for? Um, well, I mean, first of all, all of our games, uh, Blade Runner included, are really made for anybody. Whether you've seen the film or not, you'll truly enjoy the game. Uh, but also, um, you know, we're working into a lot of different areas. We're doing some stuff online, card games online, and some multiplayer games, massively multiplayer is what they call them, where you have 50 or 100 people playing at once. We have um, uh, Westwood Chat, which has about 700,000 registered users. Uh, makes us one of the largest online places you can get to talk to people and play games. All right, well, that's Lou Castle. Lou, thank you. You're very welcome. And uh, we will be showing you more of Westwood Studios throughout the program. We do have to break right now. Coming up, though, we've got some internet reviews, some game reviews, a lot more coming up on Digital Terms.